Greetings, my name is Dr. Omat Masha, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what FSH means for your fertility. FSH is the follicle stimulating hormone, and this hormone tends to signal your ovaries to actually develop the follicle that you will develop through the first part of your cycle which the development of that follicle increases the estrogen levels, which then when the estrogen level peaks will signal the luteinizing hormone to release the, the predominant follicle or the best developed follicle from your egg, from your ovary, and that follicle can potentially be fertilized. So follicle stimulating hormone is then one of the key hormones in helping the development of the follicle that will eventually be released. If you have a follicle stimulating hormone that's steadily increasing, which actually a lot of women have, uh, it means that your brain that's sending the signal to the ovary to stimulate the ovary is overproducing this hormone. And we have to wonder why is the brain producing this hormone in excess when you only need a certain level? Ideally, the FSH is below 10 is really good. So when you have higher and higher levels of FSH, your body is basically signaling to the ovaries. And when the ovary produces the optimal level of this hormone, it will signal back to the brain and the brain will stop producing that hormone. When the levels are higher, basically what we're, we understand is that even though the brain is sending the signal down to the ovaries, the ovaries are not listening. <laughs> they're basically doing their own thing or they're out to lunch or whatever it is. They're not paying attention and they're not responding to the signal. So if they don't respond, the brain never gets the feedback loop and it continues to produce that hormone right? So we need those negative feedback loops. It's basically the communication between the brain and the ovaries that helps to get, uh, get to the right level and then stop. But if you don't have that negative feedback loop, then the brain just keeps doing what it's doing. And the ovaries are like, well, I'm going to relax. I'm not going to do too much work. And there's a couple of things that can lead to high FSH levels. Uh, I've worked with a lot of women now that have FSH over 50, over 100. And theoretically, a woman of, say, perimenopausal or menopausal age that has an FSH over 20 is considered menopausal. So when you get to FSH over 20, you're usually diagnosed as menopausal. However, there's this population of women that has really high FSH levels, often above 50, 100. I had one woman that was at 150. Uh, and we could kind of group them into the category of menopause, or if they're younger than 35, they will be labeled premature ovarian failure, or we could see if there's a reason that they have the high FSH level, right? And that's usually my experience uh, when we try and figure out why the FSH level is higher than it needs to be, then you can start to affect the reversal of that. Uh, and one of the main reasons that I've found is uh, the adrenals. So there's this direct link between stress, quote unquote, I'm sure you love hearing how stress affects fertility, right? I'm sure you've heard it a million times, but it's true the adrenal hormones actually directly influence the over ovarian function. And high amounts of stress over a long period of time will actually create a response in the ovaries that 
they're sort of sluggish or they're not working as quite as well as they should given your age. So let's say you're 35 years old and you have an FSH of 18 or 20 or 30 and um, you've had a high level of stress throughout the early parts of your life, uh, what can you do about it? So all of the things that will help support adrenals, uh, help to bring back your energy, help with better sleep, will actually help to restore your ovarian function, which then will uh, hopefully help to lower your FSH level to a point where uh, you could potentially get pregnant. So that's it for today. We'll see you next time. This is Dr. Omatma and take care.